Hi everybody, just a short video today to look at a tool within Civil 3D that will help us perform some analysis on our point objects. Specifically, it's going to help us find duplicate points or near duplicate points. In other words, points that are in very close proximity to each other. So uh, let's, let's begin by adding some points to our model. So I'm going to go up to the insert uh, ribbon here. We'll come down on the import panel and say import points from a file. I've got a text file out here that is proximity.txt that contains my point information. We'll go ahead and say open and I'll come down and select the appropriate point file format. In this case it's point number northing easting elevation description common and limited. We'll say OK. We'll allow it to bring those points in. Now when it's done, uh, it might be a little bit difficult to see on your screen, so what I'm going to do is we'll uh, turn on my line work display just to make those a little bit easier to see on the screen. I've got a number of points, a little technically more than 3,000 points. Represents a project that you know spans a bunch of uh, ground shots and area within a, a parcel and then I've got some points that represent sections along the roadway that's out in front of the parcel. What I would like to do without knowing anything about this particular project is to try and identify do I have any duplicate points any situations where I've got multiple points essentially in the same location, maybe with differing elevations, things that I need to identify as kind of a QA, QC type of an approach. So uh, there is a command within Civil 3D that will allow us to do that. Uh, we can locate it in a couple different places, but the actual command is AECC report, and using the autocomplete, it's report point proximity or prox. That will activate the tool or the dialog. We can also find it if we come over to the toolbox tab of our prospector or, or our civil tool space. We'll look on the toolbox tab, we'll come down under miscellaneous utilities, underneath reports, point reports, and then here it is here, point proximity report. So we can either execute the command or I can double pick on this here to launch the tool. Now it's a little bit larger than my dialog that I'm able or my, my screen resolution that I'm able to display. So we'll uh, we we'll, should be able to make this work because really the bottom is just what we'll use at the end when we execute it. So we'll start up here at the top. Basically what we can do is it will search points within a survey database or points within a drawing. In my case, we'll search all the points in the drawing. I can specify a horizontal and an optional vertical tolerance. Um, and then I can come down at the bottom and I can specify information about uh, what I would like included in the report. What this is going to do is it's going to uh, verify or identify points that match the criteria that we have up in the top here. It's going to list it in this area here under the proximate, po or proximate points found. And then based on what's displayed in the output report, we'll have this down here at the bottom. So in my particular case, I'll be showing the point number, the closest point number to that northing easting elevation raw and full description. All right, so let's go ahead and check to see if we have duplicates. To check for duplicates, I really don't need to change anything. I mean, if I'm within four decimal places horizontally and vertically, that's close enough to a duplicate point. So I'm going to click on Search for Proximate Points. It scans the 3,000 points in my file, and it doesn't find any. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to start to expand my, my search a little bit until I reach a point where I know that I'm going to have some that are within the same vicinity of each other. We'll do a horizontal tolerance, I'll say within a foot. I'm not going to worry about vertical, but how many instances in my particular uh, data set here where points were collected, do I have points that were shot within a foot of each other? We'll go ahead and click on search for approximate points, and it automatically displays those. So it tells me the point number, the closest point number to it, its location, the elevation, and the uh, raw description that was used. So I can see in this case, a couple of these were pavement shots, one was a ground shot, one was a uh, center line. All right, now if I would like to filter this data, maybe the person who's going to uh, receive the report from me to go back and address and resolve these situations, maybe they're in different areas as, as it relates to the different uh, uh, information that's here. Maybe I don't need ground shots. I'm more interested in uh, just evaluating those things along the roadway. What I can do is I can click over on the tab here to point filters and I can further refine that information. We can refine it by a point's name. Uh, we can refine it by the descriptions that are associated with it with respect to raw description and elevation range. Area, you notice that I could select a figure, parcel, or just a closed polyline. Maybe I'm only interested in resolving or evaluating a certain part of my project. 
Uh, there's areas that we could go in and insert some filter information for user defined property classification. And then I can click and uh, apply the point filters. So in this case, let's say that I'm just interested in evaluating or you know, having somebody go back and take a look at those things that relate to the, uh, the edge of pavement. I'll click on raw description. I can put that in here for EBP. Uh, there are wildcards that are acceptable here. Asterisk would match anything that began with EBP. I could put an asterisk at the front. Uh, if I would like to separate my entries, I should be able to separate those with a comma. So in this case, we'll just do EBP. We'll say apply point filters, and now it shows me there are just two that match that criteria. If I'd like to get a little better idea of you know, what that looks like within my model, I can select on the point number here. We can select zoom to selected point and it will automatically take me to that points location. So I can see that on the screen. Uh, I could also switch over to this one, zoom to selected point. It would show me the location of that one as well. We can even do these in groups. However, not quite as useful. Uh, if I do zoom to selected points, it basically gives me a bounding box that would include both. So I can see one here. I can see one uh, happens to appear up on this side, but obviously if it was a larger project and further apart, it would be a little harder to identify. So, But know that you can do them in groups. It's not just limited to a, uh, a single zoom. So once I've done this, I'd like to uh, complete the report and hand it off to the person who will be going back and evaluating those points to determine if there's an issue there that needs to be resolved with, re with respect to having points close to each other or duplicates. Uh, the purpose for me generating this report. Let's come down, we'll uh, click on Save Report to. By default, it's a HTML file. I can tell it where it should be displayed or where it should be saved. I'm going to put it on my C drive here in a folder for uh, Tuesday on my desktop. Say desktop, we'll come down to Tuesday. Uh, CivilReport.htm. Uh, you notice we can save it in other formats as well, Adobe PDF, a uh, XLS document, TXT. We'll just do HTML for right now. I'll leave it civil report. We'll say save, and then I'll click on the button to create report. My, my report's created, and it displays that information for me, and it's ready to be handed off such that somebody can go through now and evaluate this information and determine if points need to be adjusted or resolve the situations that may have occurred that... Uh, created uh, um, created this where we have points that are close to each other. So uh, with that, I hope the information is helpful. There may be some folks out there that are wondering that, hey, what if I've got duplicates and I know they're duplicates and I'd like to remove them from my project. In my subsequent uh, or next video, we'll look at a, a workflow that will address that as well. In this particular one, we'll just be identifying it with a report so that someone can go through and address it manually. I'll, I'll show a workflow in my next video how we can go through and address some of that automatically. So hope this is helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.